Okay. Uh, thanks for coming. Uh, it's not my birthday for people that were here in the previous session, but uh, uh, so um, it's working. Uh, I'm Romain Sola. I'm uh, uh, I'm working for Société Générale, uh, French bank. That also explains my accent. Uh, I'm a Java developer and also a te technical architect. Uh, uh, this is some link for, to my uh, blog, uh, uh, Twitter account, or GitHub. So I'm going to speak about uh, Ibernet Inverse. Uh, do you know Ibernet Inverse or no? Yes? No? Okay. Uh, <coughs> so basically, it's, um, it's a module for auditing your persistent entity uh, in Ibernet, and uh, when I talk about audit, I mean we will keep a revision of uh, every, uh, every um, entity after some event, uh, generally it's uh, insertion, deletion, or update. So you have uh, a few uh, documentation uh, link over there. Sorry? Uh, so first step is uh, activation of uh, Inverse on uh, my project. Uh, it's really simple because I just need to add uh, the library in the class pass. Here is the extract of uh, my uh, POM file. Uh, just note that it will uh, require a recent version of Ibernate, at least version 3, and also you have to use Ibernate annotation to configure your, uh, your project. It's not working with the XML configuration, unfortunately. Now we can start to audit um, let's take an example of a, a really simple entity. Uh, I just need to add this annotation, audited. Uh, I, with this annotation on the class level, I said that uh, Ibernet will audit the whole, uh, the whole entity. But I can also put uh, uh, details uh, directly on, um, on the field that are interesting for me. Um, I can, of course, configure Ibernet Inverse. For example, I can ask him to uh, use a specific table for the audit. I will talk about uh, the database side just after uh, this slide. Uh, Sometimes uh, I'm not interested to audit some uh, fields. It is uh, uh, the case here with comment. I don't care about comment. So Inverse will not store uh, information about comments in the audit table. And also, if I have an entity and I update the entity only on the command field, Inverse will not create a new revision. And uh, sometimes I have also uh, a relation between, uh, uh, between entities. For example, I can have a list of address for a person, and uh, if I want to audit these, uh, these addresses, I have also to, uh, some uh, annotation to, uh, uh, to, uh, to audit uh, the joint table. It's the exact same uh, syntax as the joint table uh, from GPA. So for the, da the, the database, I have a t-person uh, table. Uh, it is really simple in this case. And Inverse will uh, require to, uh, to create a t-person hood. Uh, table which uh, will store all the revision of, uh, of the t-person uh, records. So you can see that it's uh, almost a clone of the original table. Uh, I remove comment because I, I, uh, I said to Ibernet to Inverse to uh, forget about this field, but I need to add two fields. So uh, ref type is uh, a simple uh, integer that will uh, indicate the kind of uh, revision that was made. So uh, zero for addition, one for modification, and two for deletion. And rev is the a, is a ID of, um, of the revision. So I have uh, also uh, another table which is common for all my audit table, which is by default named uh, rev info. Uh, it contains <coughs> two fields, uh, the rev, which is uh, related to the rev in T uh, person od, and the timestamp. Uh, of course, I can add uh, new information. One, uh, one common use case is to add the name of the user who triggered the, the revision. So for that, uh, Ibernet Inverse will provide me uh, uh, a default class, which is a default revision entity. So this is the first, uh, the first class on the top of the screen. I create an, an entity which will extend default uh, revision entity, and I add all the additional information I want. So in this case, uh, username, which get on setter, of course. And uh, I have also to link this entity to, um, to a listener, which, which implement uh, revision listener. 
and uh, this revision listener will have a new revision uh, method that will be called every time a new revision is uh, created by Enverse. So uh, you can see it's really simple. <coughs> um, in the latest version of uh, Enverse, they introduce uh, a, new, uh, a new feature which, uh, which, uh, allow, uh, which will um, track the modified field. For example, if I have a, a person uh, uh, record and I save, I update my entity, for example, because I changed the, the name of, uh, of the person, uh, this, this information will, uh, el will say that uh, only this field was modified. So you can uh, enable this feature globally uh, using the first property on the top of the screen. Or eventually, if you are only interested in a few fields, you can indicate uh, to inverse uh, with, uh, with modified flag set to true. And uh, on the database side, you will, get, you will need to add um, a field uh, in the t-audit person uh, T-person audit for, sorry, uh, that will get uh, only a flag zero for not modified and one for modify. So it's still an experimental feature, so maybe you, you will not encounter some bugs or evolution, so be careful about that. <coughs> So uh, we see uh, almost the main feature of Enverse to create the revision, to audit uh, my entities. Now one interesting feature is uh, how I can get the data from, uh, from these tables. And uh, Ibernet Enverse will provide me uh, the tools, the API for that. So the first class uh, is Audit Reader. Uh, with Audit Reader, uh, you can see on the third line uh, that uh, this, this Audit Reader um, propose a get revision uh, method that will uh, uh, return me a list of uh, integer or long or anything, a number, uh, for all the revision for a specific uh, uh, person uh, instance. And uh, in, you, in my loop, for example, I will ask him uh, all the, um, the revision made on a specific uh, uh, a specific person and then display uh, the entity. As you can see, I get a person class, not uh, something else, really a person. And uh, it will display, for example, this kind of information. Uh, the first one is, uh, was the insertion of uh, the person, the second line was a modification, and the last line was a deletion of the person. That explains the null, uh, the null value for the person. I have also audit query, which is, uh, uh, which is created by uh, uh, audit reader. So I, I can ask him, for example, to get me all the entity as, at a specific revision, because you can see that like uh, a subversion uh, commit. If I commit, uh, let's say, three files, it will, I will only have one revision, but three files. So in uh, inverse, it's a little bit like that. You can have one revision, but several entities uh, modify at the same time. So for example, in, my, uh, uh, in this uh, code, I will uh, uh, retrieve a list of person uh, for a specific revision. And uh, my output will be, for example, uh, two person uh, with their value at this time. But um, audit query also uh, provides me another uh, method, which is for revision of entity. So, uh, it's uh, another uh, method that will retrieve uh, uh, different, uh, a different object. It's in fact an array of objects. Uh, it will it contain for each uh, record. It will contain three values. <coughs> the first one is the person, a little bit like in the preview t previous uh, example. The second one is uh, entity revision. It's uh, it's in this class that I can have the revision ID, the timestamp, and uh, the uh, the username because I added uh, uh, the username who triggered the, the revision. And the last object of the array is a ref type. So I can see, for example, on the first line that uh, uh, Romain was added on the database. Uh, in the second line, I, I have Chuck Norris. Uh, on third line, I have the modification of Romain and deletion of uh, Romain was done on the last uh, line because I didn't try to delete uh, Chuck Norris. 
Uh, audit query has, uh, it, it's like a, a little bit like um, criteria API. You can, uh, you can customize your, uh, your query. For example, uh, I had a specific order. I want to, to list uh, all the persons that was modified on the 42 revision. Uh, I want to sort them uh, by their surname. I can add also some specific uh, condition and limit the number of results I, uh, I retrieve. And uh, I think you you know this kind of syntax if you use already uh, uh, Imbernet criteria. <coughs> and uh, I, I, um, I introduced a few slides ago uh, the possibility to track the modified field. Uh, you can also use, uh, use this feature in your uh, audit query. For example, I can ask Enverse uh, uh, to retrieve only the, uh, the, the entity wha where a certain property was modified or not modified. So. <coughs> I have five minutes left, so I, I can show you a, a, a short demo. So in my demo, uh, uh, I create, um, I, have, I think you can read it, but anyway, it's on GitHub, so you can uh, retrieve all the code. Uh, I create a, a small database using H2 in memory uh, database. I have T person, T person old and rev uh, info uh, tables uh, with the fields. Uh, and um, I have also a person uh, uh, entity with uh, audited uh, annotation. And in my test, I do some really basic uh, CRUD uh, operation. So I create, I create me, check Norris, modification. At, after every modification, I, uh, I ask uh, my test to display the content of, uh, of the database. So if I run it. So it's a little verbose because uh, uh, I also ask him to display all the all the uh, SQL uh, queries. So this is, for example, the content of the database at, the, at really at the end. So you can see that I have only one person uh, in my database, a T person table, because I deleted uh, me. In the T person hold, the second table, I have all the modifications I made. And uh, as you can see, I also uh, enabled the uh, modified flag uh, feature. So if you look at the third uh, line, it was, uh, it was when I only asked uh, to modify, uh, the, to add a uh, surname, it, the code is here. So uh, I, I change, uh, uh, I have my, uh, my entity and I put my, uh, my surname, I save the entity. So it, um, it created a, a, a revision in my tables. So, and you can see that uh, uh, name mode was not modified, but uh, surname mode, uh, which, uh, which uh, is equal to one, uh, indicate me that uh, this field and only this field was modified. You have also at the end of this uh, table the type of, uh, of modification. And, uh, and finally, the last table, which is the rev info with uh, the timestamp and uh, the username, which was uh, uh, hard coded in, in my case. So it's a short demo, but uh, it, it shows um, basically the main feature of, uh, of uh, Inverse. So to summarize, uh, I think Converse is really, really easy to use, uh, fully integrated by Ibernet because it's a module of Ibernet. It's not uh, a separate project. Uh, and unfortunately, of course, it requires uh, Hibernate. And uh, uh, if you use an old version uh, with XML configuration, uh, then it's not compatible, uh, at least uh, yet, because you have a Jira ticket. But um, not sure it will be uh, uh, it will be supported uh, in the next future. So I have two minutes. If you have any question about uh, about Hibernate and Verse, yeah. Uh, when you configure your, uh, your persistence uh, classes uh, using XML configuration, you really need, in fact, uh, to annot the annotation of, uh, of Ibernet. Uh, 
uh, I think it's uh, essentially Hibernetians. Yes? Mm -hmm. Uh, no, no, in fact, uh, it depends also on the, uh, the framework you are using, but uh, for example, uh, if you use Spring Security, you can get this information. Also, uh, I think Hibernate has some, uh, some features for that, but uh, uh, this is uh, really easy, and uh, I also used in my uh, project in production uh, today, uh, so it's not a problem. So time's up. Thank you for coming, and I hope you will enjoy uh, uh, using Hibernate Inverse. <laughs>